All right, so my daily uh, watching the world burn update. That was a uh, Russian position that they filmed. Uh, by the way, the Russian there said that they confirmed hits on all Ukrainian targets with those shells. So you make of that what you will, what you will. Thank God we've got the neocon warmongering Democrats in charge. And we're going to get into that story. I want to talk a little bit about history in this video. But we'll get into that. And so somebody asked, they said, why do you call them warmongering Democrats? I thought that the Republicans were all about war. Yes and no. We'll get into that. So, um, well, I, I, I might have talked about this yesterday. But anyway, you know, the Western sanctions have backfired on Russia, which is actually kind of good news. Because, uh, you know, when you think about it, we were going to implement these uh, global digital currencies and basically tie the world into a, a global uh, central banking system. Uh, that's all. That's all history now. <laughs> Russia, Russia destroyed the whole damn globalist uh, agenda. Now, I, you know, so that's a, that's actually a good thing. And now, are we going to still have digital currencies? I think we will. But when you think about it, you're going to have uh, alter, alternative uh, currencies, assuming the world doesn't get destroyed in a global thermal nuclear war. Uh, because, you know, just think, you can trade with the, uh, the BRICS nations, uh, which is going to include uh, Brazil, China, Russia, uh, South Africa. I think Iran's going to sign on with that. Uh, well, I, I, Saudi Arabia, I, I think it looks like, I don't know, speculation, Dubai may be uh, getting into the, uh, the BRICS nations. So the entire Western uh, uh, dollar hegemony is uh, completely uh, fracturing at this point. And so uh, these uh, uh, global digital currencies, uh, I, I think they're dead in the water, although they'll still implement on us. Uh, we're going to suffer with that. But, uh, but, the, but the thing is, you know, there's always black markets and there's always places you can go and there's always precious metals. Uh, and I'm not sure how precious metals, uh, how viable they're going to be in the coming new world order, but uh, we'll see. Boy, I tell you, they completely uh, uh, misjudged this uh, you, Russian war. <laughs> I mean, it's just it just keeps going south every day. Um, so I kind of wanted to go back through history, and so I wanted to answer that question: Why do you say the warmongering Democrats? Okay, well, if you want to recall back to World War II, there's a lot of um, well, no, there's there's evidence that that Roosevelt, uh, which actually I. I I don't consider him like a totally evil president, but uh, he was a Democrat, and uh, he wanted war uh, with Japan, and uh, they they imposed some some economic uh, uh, calamities for Japan, and so Japan they basically backed them into a corner, just like we backed Russia into a corner, or NATO did, uh, and or the U.S. Uh, leading NATO, uh, and so Japan just felt like it had no choice but to go to war. So that's how that whole thing took place. So warmongering Democrats, right? The Vietnam War, uh, John F. Kennedy, uh, I consider him a Republican. 
uh, in my opinion, although he was a Democrat. Uh, so what, it, what happened when he wouldn't go to war in uh, Vietnam? Well, we know what happened. Uh, the, the, somehow um, some lunatic uh, up in a tower, if we're willing to believe that, uh, lots of uh, conspiracy theories on that if you watch those. Uh, and they took him out, and then Lyndon Johnson came in, and uh, boom, we were another warmongering Democrat. We were at war in Vietnam. <laughs> the Democrats, the Democrats went to war in Syria. The Democrats went to war in Libya. I mean, it's just it's just a repeat. So then you say, okay, Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan came in, and uh, and so what war did Ronald Reagan start? Well, I guess we went to war with Grenada for what three days. And, of course, we did have the Iran-Contra affair, which I was part of. I was supposed to go down to Honduras and fight, and I talked about that in a previous video. But uh, uh, that, that pretty well, I mean, we had troops in Honduras for sure. Uh, so you could say that Ronald Reagan, on a very, very limited scale, was a warmonger, but not, not to the extent that the Democrats are. I, of course, the Democrats, what was the other one? Um, um, uh, Bosnia. Remember Bosnia? What, what were the... Uh, well, anyway... I could just go through war after war after war after war that all the Democrats uh, started and, uh, and, and came. And th the other thing that's weird about all of this, like, okay, is that they're uniform as a party. You know, yes, yes, we've had Bush, Bush, a rhino, Republican in name only. He was really a Democrat. He got us into the Iraq war. But there were Republicans that dissented with that in a, in a, I wouldn't say a substantial number, but, you know, maybe one third of the Republicans voted against it. But all the Democrats, all the Democrats always vote for war, always vote for war. They are bought and paid for by the military industrial complex. So let's keep going. Uh, Oh, yeah, this is, uh, I thought this, was, <laughs> I, was, uh, I was watching the Duran today, I love watching them guys, and uh, they were pointing out that Trump is truly the most investigated man in U.S. history, he's been uh, up for impeachment three times, uh, he, nothing has ever stuck on Trump, and so what they were pointing out, I mean, because the deep state has come after him time after time, the Democrats have come after him time after time, he must be the cleanest man in history. <laughs> I mean, if you can't find no dirt with as much digging as the FBI and the deep state has done, oh my God, it's just insane, isn't it? So um, I, this, was, uh, this was very uh, interesting. I saw a video today of, her, of Vic Victoria Nolan. Um, she uh, basically came out and hinted that the United States uh, committed the biggest act of terrorism in probably the history of the world by blowing up the Nord Stream pipeline. Now, if, if the Russians had come to the United States and blown up one of our pipelines, I dare say we'd be in nuclear war right now. So the restraint by the Russians, I think, is pretty damn astounding, especially when you've got these uh, neocon uh, global lunatics actually coming out and bragging about the fact that, uh, yeah, yeah, we, we're so happy that we blew up Nord Stream. Now, are the Germans going to be infuriated when they find out you know, 100%, because the truth comes out. We've, we've seen Russia Gate, uh, you know, the Russia, Russia, Russia hoax. Uh, you know, the truth has come out about so many things. You know, Elon Musk, somebody pissed him off. He exposed so many things that the Democrats had done. You know, the FBI cozying up to uh, Twitter. I mean, it's just been huge. I, I, I watch it every day in fascination. That's why I make these videos. So uh, I always get into... Um, uh, well, let's just keep with the global stuff first before I get into the stuff where I can help you. Okay, so the um, the balloon story uh, with China flying it over the United States is being blasted all the way over the media. Now, you have to understand our media is bought and paid for by the U.S. government. Uh, they're nothing but a propaganda arm of the Democrat Party for the most part and the, and the neocon and uh, rhino Republicans, uh, the uniparty, let's just say. But uh, the fact that this story is getting so much playtime, uh, a lot of people are speculating that that's an uh, uh, indication that we're going to go up against China. And so I am going to refute that. I am going to say, no way, no how. This is all just smoke and mirrors. Uh, Biden is bought and paid for by uh, communist China. Uh, there's, there's a lot of politicians in the U.S. government that are bought and paid for by China. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you know. 
I'm sure they, they would love nothing more than, well, they're trying to make China out to be the boogeyman so that they can uh, do something else. It's, uh, there's always, you know, the, it's like the magician, right? You got the left hand doing something over here and the right hand is actually where the hammer's going to fall. So let's just, we'll see where that goes. But that's just what my opinion. I, I don't, I think this whole China thing, it's, it's not going to go nowhere. Uh, China's got too many uh, American politicians in their back pocket, especially the whole Biden administration uh, and, and a lot of people in the deep state. So, um, yeah, I already talked about uh, uh, the, the, the dollars coming to an end. You already know that. Uh, but you know what? And, and somebody pointed out today that the dollar using its, losing its reserve currency status, it's going to be painful for all of us here, but it could be good for the United States in the long run. Because now we can't be a global empire and we can't uh, wage wars all around the world because the, nobody's going to be using the dollar no more. <laughs> you know, so, so I was like, you know, that's except for us, I guess, when it's worthless. Um, so we'll see. Uh, the, um, the other thing, uh, we are now talking about sending uh, contractors to Ukraine. I uh, understand contractors are, are usually... Uh, uh, either retired veterans, uh, uh, some of them will actually be in the military. They're just called contractors. Uh, they, you know, they can always label things how they want. And they're saying 200 uh, to repair the weapon systems in Ukraine because they want to prolong this war. Or they want to kill as many Ukrainians as possible. That's basically how I interpret this. Or, you know, and they, they'll say in their minds, uh, in their uh, evil warped minds, that, you know, they're bleeding Russia. No, they're bleeding Ukrainians. Ukrainians are the ones taking the brunt of this uh, awful tragedy. Um, but, uh, yeah, so if you're sending 200, uh, that's, that's, you know, t just multiply that by 10. That's 2,000 uh, uh, contractors going to Ukraine uh, potentially to get killed, but they'll be way behind the lines, especially if they're really working on the equipment. But I imagine a lot of the... A lot of more mercenaries are going up to the front lines, and they're going to get themselves killed. Uh, the next thing was uh, Poland. Um, well, they're eyeballing uh, Ukraine for territory. They, they've been building up their military. Uh, they, you know, they're they're beating the war drums. Uh, so as uh, Ukraine uh, continues to just get destroyed, um, you know, you, uh, Poland may come across and try to take some territory, which. Uh, I don't know. We'll see how that goes. It hadn't gone too well for them in the past. Uh, if you look back through the last two, 200 years of history. Uh, but um, And then, of course, I, I heard rumors today that a lot of uh, Ukraine uh, soldiers and officers and stuff are resigning. They don't want any part of this war. They don't want to, they don't want to go fight the Russians. So we'll see how that goes. Um, don't know if you're following, but there's been a huge, huge purge in the uh, Kolensky uh, uh, Ukraine government. Um, man, I tell you that uh, the, the, there was a helicopter that got shot down with the Interior Ministry and uh, most of his staff, uh, and then a, a bunch of people have been uh, uh, basically ousted from the uh, Ukrainian government. A lot of speculation on what that means, uh, and of course, in the end, I think they'll set up a uh, Kalinsky, uh, you know, for, for his demise, but uh, we'll see. Uh, and of course, we and we got Romania, that's I in Ukraine. Um, lots of rumors about uh, a lot of military equipment flying into Romania, uh, which is one of the Baltic states uh, right next to uh, Russia. So we, we may have uh, Poland and Romania invade Ukraine uh, to fight the Russians. So we'll see where that goes. It could be interesting. Uh, I reported yesterday on the military bases in the Philippines uh, and how everybody was protesting that. Um, but I, what I didn't realize is that, you know, more about what they're protesting is that we're spending a lot of money down there to build military bases uh, in, in, you know, speculation is to fight China. So how, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Um, let's see. God, I don't know what that note's about. All right, I'll just skip it. Russia deploys... Uh, oh, yeah, this was an uh, interesting thing. So, yeah, I'm, Lavnia. It's Lavnia. I'm, well, well, this is yeah, another... Uh, well, Romania is not a Balkan nation. I'm sorry. Romania. I've, I've got ahead of myself. It's Lavnia. And Russia has deployed... Uh, they're deploying the S-300 uh, air defense systems, which can also hit ground targets uh, near Lavnia. Okay, then, and so... Uh, what I what I was right about, you know, a lot of military equipment flying into Romania. 
Uh, so, so yeah, Russia about people. So the, oh, here's an interesting fact of it today. I didn't realize the Russian people and, and Putin told them to do this. And uh, I think it's very smart. He told his people to buy gold. And uh, and so before the war, uh, they, in, well, in 2022, well, actually, I guess during the war then, yeah, 2022, they bought 50 tons of gold <laughs> in 2022. Do you think Russia is preparing to divest the world of the dollar? I think so. I think Putin's a smart dude, man. I, I, I think that uh, they're going to go onto a gold standard and just uh, and, and bring along a lot of countries with them. It should be interesting. I mean, when you got India, China, Brazil, and the ones I already listed. Um, okay, and then uh, Russia, at this point, I didn't realize this. I knew they were selling uh, their oil on the open market. That's how their economy is doing so well. Uh, but India is buying a lot of it. And uh, But the Russia so far, they, you know, they... The, um, uh, they set the uh, the sanctions cap at sixty dollars a barrel. Well, they're, they're, I guess the West hasn't learned their lesson, so they're going to try to lower the, uh, the the cap for the oil price to forty dollars a barrel. Well, that's going to put India in a bad situation uh, because they can either obey the West and quit buying Russian oil, or they can tell the West to go screw themselves and just buy it at whatever the market price is. And I honestly believe India is going to tell the West to go screw themselves. So I don't think this $40 cap is going to mean anything, but it is putting India in a position to defy the West. I mean, at this point, India has just been playing the, you know, they've been burning the candle at both ends. They've been friends with Russia and they're friends with the West, but this is going to put India basically at odds with the West. So we are alienating more of more of the world. So we says uh, uh, that's going to be interesting. Uh, Putin came out and I, it, I, I'm just going to summarize what, what I think he was pointing out. Uh, he says that the complete destruction of Ukraine is now necessary. <laughs> so, so he's not going to accept because he doesn't trust the West. He, you know, he wants to defang Ukraine forever. Uh, he doesn't want them to ever threaten Russia ever again. So basically he said, you know, I'm sorry, you know, we're going to destroy uh, Ukraine completely. Uh, that means, uh, and it's, it, it's, it's actually horrible. I mean, these are hundreds of thousands of people that are dying. Um, so anyway, uh, continuing with the notes. Uh, oh, here we are. This, this was the meme of the day. <laughs> I thought this was freaking hilarious. And I had to add to it. I wish I could show it to you. I can only show you like a little bit. I, I, cause I, you know, I can't spend forever editing these videos. I could just take notes and try to go around the world every single day watching the world burn, right? But anyway, there was the meme. It shows Montana raising the Ukraine flag. And then it says, this is so that the U.S. will defend their airspace. <laughs> So I would add to that, we need one with Texas raising the Ukraine flag so that with the uh, United States might defend the border down there because the Democrats, don't, they want open borders. Uh, so that would be pretty cool. Maybe that's what Texas should do. Fly the Ukraine flag just below the Texas flag. Uh, and and I'm, I'm being serious. I think it'd be hilarious. And make that a political stunt uh, for real. And say, hey, you know, we uh, we support Ukraine. That means you have to come defend the uh, Texas border. <laughs> I think I think that would be just I, I I would laugh my buns off. So let's get to how I can help you today. Um, I I noticed uh, well you know silver dropped um, yesterday quite a bit, and so I did check the price again today because sometimes it just kind of goes up uh, even though the markets aren't trading right now or anything. Uh, you can still buy, and I know this sounds like an evil number, it's 666. You can buy for $666, you can buy uh, 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 the um, Australian uh, kangaroo uh, silver coin, one ounce, uh, 25 of them. That's a tube. You can buy one tube. Um, I, I can't afford it right now, uh, but I wish I could because that's a good price, and I just wanted to... To help you out if you've got the money now would be a good time that's an sd bullion i don't know what the other dealers are offering uh and then of course on a house front i just wanted to to help you out in whatever way i can this is uh caspen k-e-s-p-e-n you can find it on um, amazon right now it's it it's only 12 bucks i i don't know what i paid for this i i'm sure i paid more for it 
uh, when I bought it, because I bought it a long time ago. I probably bought it, well, it might have been a year ago. I don't know. Uh, but there's, it's called a one-way mirror window film. And uh, the reason that I got it was the sun in Florida here, it comes in shining on my, uh, my front door through a glass uh, door. Now, I could put a screen in there, but I, I just, you know, I like having the glass. I, I, I'm just not going to swap out the glass for the screen every, every summer and, you know, whatever. I just, uh, so anyway, I put this film on there, and it offers, I think, an 82% uh, UV protection. Uh, so I'll just read you the specs here. It's uh, um, cost efficient and energy savings, uh, proper private. But and that's another thing that I like. Um, so, you know, Sometimes I have the front door open and, you know, I got to do my thing and I'm not dressed appropriately. Uh, so I got to walk in front of that front door and anybody could just look in and see me if I've got the front door open. Because uh, I do have a solid steel front door with no windows but as long as it's shut. But, you know, sometimes I just like to leave it open and have the glass door there. Well, now with this reflective film, nobody can see in the house during the day as long as the sun's shining on it. So I like that. Um... I, had a, I hired a guy. I mean, I, I highly encourage you to hire somebody. Uh, man, this guy came in, and I, I, I felt good for him, man. I mean, he, uh, he, he, was just, he just wanted to charge me 25 bucks to do the deal. And, man, I, I bet in gas alone he probably spent $5 just getting here and probably getting home. I tipped him $15. I just gave him $40. I said, man, I appreciate it, you know. And uh, he was in and out. I'd say, in, well, and I cleaned the door. I cleaned the window. And by the way, there's paint specks on there. I had to scrape those off with a razor blade. So I spent a good two hours prepping the door for him. Um, but uh, anyway, um, so, but you ask, well, why did you tip him? Well, the reason was he was hoping to get business in my neighborhood. And I knew in my mind that there's no way that I can help him get any business in the neighborhood. I don't even hardly talk to my neighbors. Hell, I don't hardly talk to anybody. Uh, so you know, so there's no way I was going to get in business. And so I wanted to pay him a fair price. Now, someday, maybe I might get to do business with him again. And I'm sure he appreciated the $15 tip. But I'm just telling you, this is how you do business. This is how you make uh, business relationships. I might, uh, I might want to tent something, you know, I've got some sliding glass doors that I'm going to be installing, maybe I'll put some tent on there. I don't know. Uh, I don't see where I would ever use him ever again. And I would certainly recommend him. But it wasn't fair for him to charge me such a cheap price on the outside chance that I would recommend him. Now, I can put him in the book in my community because we have like an Angie's list, and I will do that. So he was smart. He was smart to do that. So anyway, I just wanted to tell you about this window film because what would happen is that sun shining in, I actually have burnt my hands uh, open in the front door because during the summer when it's 100 degrees, that front door with that glass, it's like a magnifying mirror. So this should help out. I just wanted to throw that out. So we got the silver price. I'm trying to help you there. I'm trying to help you with the window film. Maybe you got a, a gl glass door where the sun comes in and, uh, and, and heats it up. Um, anyway, we've got a lot of truly evil people in this world that uh, just don't care about Ukraine and they just want to kill a lot of Ukrainians. Uh, the other thing, last thing I'll finish up with was uh, there's a lot of evidence that Ukraine is... Um, uh, just doing what they did during the Civil War. They're going around and gathering up anybody that doesn't want to fight, uh, throwing them into a uniform and uh, uh, basically uh, telling them to, to go to the front lines or die. Uh, and, and, and actually go to the front lines and die. Uh, no choice. You die either way. So that's what the Ukrainians are doing. I have not seen any evidence of the Russians doing that. To me, so far, the Russians is an all-volunteer... Uh, well, I say volunteer. I mean, they're, they're being called up. They're reservists. It's like serving in the military here. You know, if I was in the National Guard and I get called up, that's just the price that I pay for being in the military, you know. But not these people. They're just taking people. And I'm trained, right? I'm trained. I've talked about my military experience. These people are just being uh, taken off of the streets and given a gun. So anyway, say hi, boo. Hi, boo. Hi, boo. All right. Peace out. Stay free. That's the watching the world burn video for, uh, what is it today? The fourth? I, I think it is. Yeah, I think it's the fourth. Good, good, good to live in the free, free, free Republican state of Florida under the great leadership of Governor DeSantimonious. And I wonder what nickname uh, 
Trump's going to come up for Nikki Haley when uh, she announces her run on uh, February 14th. I can't wait because he always labels everybody with a nickname. I, I love the sanctimonious name. I, I, <laughs> as much as I love Governor DeSantis, I just think the sanctimonious is hilarious. All right.